Hola y bienvenidos a la clase de español. The topic of this lesson is la pronunciación española, an introduction to Spanish pronunciation. ¿Por qué? Why is this an important lesson? Spanish pronunciation is not incredibly difficult given the fact that the sounds are very similar to English in a lot of cases and that they have the same alphabet for the most part as English, but it definitely warrants some attention, especially as you begin your study of Spanish and start learning Spanish vocabulary and begin to interact in Spanish. This will benefit you both as you speak Spanish and with your comprehension of Spanish spoken by other people. In this presentation, I want to outline some of the important ways that Spanish pronunciation differs from English. One important thing that I want to point out at the very beginning is I will give approximation sounds that are similar in English and Spanish. And please keep in mind that in most of these cases it is not an identical sound. There is some variation between Spanish and English. So you do need to pay close attention to the, the pronunciation that you hear as you hear Spanish words pronounced. Las vocales, the vowels. Un vocal corresponde a un sonido, to one sound. This contrasts to English where we have multiple sounds for a single vowel, such as A can say A, 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 A. In Spanish, each of those only has one sound. So A dice A, similar to the A in the English word father. E dice E. This is similar to the A in the English weight. I dice I, like the E in ink. O dice O, like the O in soap. U dice U, as in troop. One important distinction here is that las vocales españoles son más breves, shorter, y puras, que las vocales inglesas. So we're in English, for example, with the, the O in soap. If you say the word soap in English, you'll notice that, that it's kind of two sounds put together. It's O. We close our mouth at the end and say O. In Spanish, that does not happen. So it's O. So for example, the word oso. It's not O so, it's oso. And you'll notice that 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 O sound is much shorter and pure, more of a pure sound than the English equivalent. Continuing on with one of the sounds, or two of the sounds that people often consider to be the most difficult in Spanish, R y R. R is like the flap in the middle of words like water and shutter in rapid speech, never like the, the English R in river. And some English speakers also pronounce this sound in words like three, when you're moving your tongue back from the, the interdental position saying the th sound, the th sound, moving it back in your mouth. So if you say three, you may notice that you do a little tap like that as you're pronouncing that word. Otherwise, it is, it is very similar to water and shudder when you say those quickly. But the most important distinction there is to not pronounce it like the er sound. That sound does not exist in Spanish. La R, the double R, we could call that a trill. It's often called a trill or a rolled R. And it involves the flap from above, but several times in rapid succession. So some people are able to pronounce this sound without any difficulty, just with their tongue against the roof of their mouth and air flowing quickly over over the top of your tongue. And if you are not able to pronounce this sound initially, keep practicing with that flap and then, then saying several of them close together. And and work on getting familiar with the feeling of your of your mouth position and your tongue position as you make that sound. The biggest thing, like with the single R, is to avoid the temptation to pronounce it as an er. So it would it's better to find some sort of approximation that is closer even if you can't yet make that trilled r sound. Las consonantes. So a few important notes about Spanish consonants. The first is p, t, and k, or p, t, k, y c when it's followed by a, 
o or u. These are more controlled than their English equivalents with no accompanying puff of air. So if you hold your hand in front of your mouth, and you can do this as you're listening to the presentation, hold your, your hand in front of your mouth and say the English words paper, total, and cuckoo. And likely you'll feel a puff of air if you hold your hand a couple inches in front of your mouth, or you can hold a paper in front of your mouth and you can watch it move with the puff of air. And um, you'll notice that that in English, there's that puff with those sounds, with the, the p and t and k. In Spanish, there should not be that same puff of air. So compare paper with papel, total with total, and cuckoo with cuckoo. The next set of consonants are D and T, de y te. And the difference here is the location of articulation, where you make the sound. So in English, we make these sounds with our tongue against what's called the alveolar ridge, that ridge right behind your front top teeth. Um, so we say d and t with our, our tongue, the tip of our tongue against that ridge. In Spanish, these are pronounced with the tip of your tongue pressed against the back of your top front teeth. So it's d and t. The next two are b y b. There is no distinction between the sounds of these two letters in Spanish. You will hear some variation in the pronunciation due to surrounding sounds, the context of the letter in the word and in the phrase has more to do with the pronunciation than whether it's a what we would call a B or a V. So in Spanish these sounds, the, these letters have no distinction between the two. So you'll have, you'll hear Spanish speakers say when they're they're asking for something to be spelled they may ask for the distinction between B grande y B chico. Big, big B and little B because they they are essentially the same sound. Um, or B de burro the B that's in the word burro, or B de vaca, the, word that, the letter that's in the word vaca, which means cow. Um, so you may hear those distinctions. The next sound is the eye, the, the double L, which is similar to the English Y. One important thing to note here is that there is much dialectical variation. So you may hear this, you'll often hear it just pronounced Y. So, for example, the word L-L-A-M-A -A is pronounced llama, but you may also hear it pronounced jama or jama or llama. Um, so keep in mind that you will hear variations on this sound, but the most general is pronounced similar to the English Y. Our next set of consonants, the first is H or H, which is always silent. So keep that in mind. There will never be a sound associated with H in Spanish. The ñ, with the N with the tilde over the top, is pronounced like the NY in the English word canyon. And the J, the J, is pronounced similar to the English H. One difference is that it's often a harsher sound. It's it's pronounced back in the back of the throat and it's a harsher sound than the English H. So for example the name of the letter is pronounced J rather than J. And on the recording it may not be easy to hear the difference between the two but you'll notice as you listen to people speak that often it will be a harsher sound. Okay so if you're wondering how you're going to improve, como mejorar, your pronunciation. There are a couple things. Por practicar, obviously, by practicing. So some ways that you can practice are to listen to Spanish. So you can listen to Spanish radio. You can put some of your favorite movies on this, the Spanish language track. Um, you can watch Spanish television or ask some of your friends who are native Spanish speakers to converse in Spanish and just practice listening to them because the more you hear those sounds, the more you will um, begin to start replicating those. Also watch people as they speak Spanish because as you watch them and notice their mouth position, especially if it's someone who you know well and you can ask them to pronounce things more slowly so that you can really pay attention to how to their mouth position as they're speaking. And finally, um, record yourself and note sounds that you make that don't sound right. If they don't sound like what you've heard from native Spanish speakers, try to identify 
what the difference is. So that's where you might notice that um, that the way you pronounce a D is not the same as, as the way you've heard it pronounced by native Spanish speakers. And so then you can try to um, identify what the difference is. And then I have some recursos, some resources that I want to show you quickly. The first resource I want to show you is on the studyspanish.com website, their pronunciation section, which has a series of lessons about pronunciation. So if you link here to any um, Listen and sound, repeat. It Be has sure to the, make um, your tongue touch the back of your front teeth. It will tell you some, some points about how to pronounce these sounds, and then it will have different examples for you to listen to and repeat. The next one is an online dictionary, Spanish.dictionary.com, which you can use just as an, an online dictionary just to translate words that you are needing to know. Um, I do not recommend using the English-Spanish translation. And you can review the video that I've created on, on using online dictionaries effectively for more information about that. But the thing that I do like about this dictionary is that it has the pronunciation. Abrigo. Albornoz. Albornoz. So that can be very helpful when you're looking up a word to be able to have the pronunciation right there for you. And then the third site is a little more academic, not as user-friendly, but it's a great resource to use. Um, it's the University of Iowa, and it has different sounds in Spanish, and you'll, you kind of have to look through it, and it's not using necessarily the letters that are used for spelling, but it's the, the international phonetic alphabet. But it still can help you with... Um, it can still help you with understanding the pronunciation. So here are the the single and the double R, um, and it, actually there these are the this is the symbol for the single R, and this is the symbol for the double R. But if we click on this one, it has a list of words. It'll show you yeah. the the position of your mouth as you pronounce the sound, and then you can also listen to and watch a person pronounce Cero. it. The timing is off on it on the video it seems like this time but I think that just has to do with my computer because I because I have too many different things running because I've never seen it do that before so anyway those three resources I recommend for helping you improve your pronunciation in addition to just continuing to practice and to listen to Spanish as much as possible